If you've watched this channel before, you know that I spend a lot of time explaining music theory and break down the fretboard using things like scales, arpeggios, and triads. Now, don't get me wrong, these are super powerful tools for understanding music and becoming a more well-rounded guitar player. But that's not what I actually think about when I'm playing. You see, music is like a language, and learning the notes is like learning the letters of the alphabet. Learning the rules of music theory is very much like learning the rules of grammar. But when it comes time to actually talk, we don't think about spelling or grammar. We think about vocabulary, phrases and expressions that help you express your thoughts and feelings. And that vocabulary is exactly what I'm hearing when I'm improvising through a solo. <laughs> So if you've ever tried to learn a second language, you'll know that there's really kind of two different approaches. You can get a tutor, take classes, get books, and kind of go the academic route. Or you can immerse yourself around people that speak that language and pick it up by ear by hearing the language spoken in the context of daily life. And music is really no different than that. Right, Taking private lessons, watching online tutorials is a great way to cover the academic side of things. But I believe you really need a combination of these two learning approaches to become a well-rounded musician. Now, if you want to uh, immerse yourself in music and pick it up by ear, some great ways to do that are by listening to a lot of records, transcribing things by ear. Also, going to live performances and seeing great musicians perform firsthand. And then, of course, also performing and playing with other musicians, especially musicians that are going to challenge you and push you. If you combine these things with a basic fundamental knowledge of theory and the fretboard, really the sky is the limit. <laughs> every day when I pick up the guitar is vocabulary that I've transcribed. Things that I've picked up from other musicians and incorporated into my own playing. Um, this is how I've learned so many of the things that I know about music, from listening to and analyzing the work of other musicians. Now sometimes it takes me a while to understand the theory behind uh, some of these things that I learn. But by understanding the context of the song, the underlying chord progression, I can see where this vocabulary fits in and I can start to use it. Then by having a basic understanding of music theory and um, you know how the fretboard breaks down, I can start to analyze this stuff and figure out what's really going on. This allows me um, to then expand on it, reorganize it, spread it around the fretboard, and start to make this vocabulary my own. All right, so here's an example of something I recently transcribed, a little piece of vocabulary that I've added to my own playing. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about how I would analyze this and start to incorporate it and make it my own thing. This is something I heard uh, my friend Pat Bergeson play at a recent gig. Uh, Pat is a phenomenal jazz guitar player, if you're not familiar with him. Um, but this was over a swing blues in the key of F. And this lick happens over sort of the six, two, five, one part of the progression, you know. So from F to D7, G minor, to C7, and back to one. So understanding the context of where this lick happens, what is the underlying harmony, what's the chord progression, what section of the form is it in, that's really the most important first step because that's going to really help you when it comes time to analyze it and figure out what's going in, on in the lick. So the next step, once you sort of have the form and the context, is just simply learning what was played. So in this case, um, it's this. Mm -hmm. 
right? So a really beautiful line, kind of a bebop style line that outlines those chords. So now you can take a deeper look at it and start to figure out uh, what exactly is going on in this lick. And it starts over the F7 chord and uh, we're highlighting you know the third of that chord. It starts on the chord and then it does sort of a little trill that goes back to that third. And then right here we're targeting the third of that D7 chord. So that's where the chord change happens. And then again, sort of doing a little chromatic enclosure that's targeting the root of that D7 chord. So, And then here we're kind of switching over to our G minor and targeting chord tones of that G minor. Right, there's the minor third of G minor and there's the root, right? And then uh, sort of a little chromatic bluesy thing, right, to, to target the root of the C chord. And then we're back to our, F, uh, our F7. Right, so now that I know what's played and I can kind of see how it fits over the context of the chord, sort of how it overlays over that backdrop, what the harmony is. Then I can start uh, taking it and moving it around. If I know the different positions on the fretboard, I can move that same lick around in different spots. I could play it down here. Um, Right, and move it around to all the different positions and different string sets and and start playing it in different keys and, and all of those things that come with having a, a, a good grasp of the fretboard. But then I can also take the concepts, um, if I understand the theory behind it, you know, what chord tones are being targeted, uh, little things uh, like chromatic movements that are being used, I can start to kind of break that apart and uh, incorporate it with other things that I know that are similar or just uh, take those concepts and elaborate them on them and reorganize them. So I could take the opening part of this lick and then from here uh, maybe go in a slightly different direction. Right, and then maybe something like that. So that's a nice line. Right, or I could do something like Right, so just taking um, these concepts, these ideas of targeting chord tones using chromatic uh, enclosures and little things like that and taking this basic vocabulary and phrasing and using that as a jumping off point um, to create vocabulary of my own. So, um, you know, this is, this is a huge part of, of how I play guitar and how I, you know, find my own uh, ideas and concepts to play on the instrument. All right, thank you for joining me here on my channel and for watching this video. For more lesson content, check out my Patreon page and look down in the description for all the links to my different courses. As always, happy practicing, take care, and I will catch you next time.